That's great. That's great. Uh, you know who buys a lot of it? The people that work for us. Fox guy came by the other day. I nailed him on 9-11. I said, he was a photojournalist. I said, you know, you've got a 6% approval rating, but you don't tell the truth. That's why we don't you know, we like you. <laughs> hey, what are we going to tell the truth about? This is 9-11 for one, you know. When was the last time you were going to be with the <laughs> just love it, they pay me a lot of money. I said, yeah, what price your soul? Yeah, uh, yeah so, man, that's what a treat. So the story <laughs> with Drez. Yeah, well, thank you. Great to be seen as long as I can, you know. <laughs> Weird. But, um, yeah. Drez came by. I, I, that's a good one. This, uh, you gotta watch it. You're the only movie. person I've ever seen say that, except for me. I keep hearing I got it, it from you. I was like, oh, good. Yeah. good. Well, that's. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it out I'm there. I'm not a great yeah. artist. I steal yeah. stuff. That's great. I, I, I'm not a genius. Well, I can't be a genius on my own. <laughs> is, you know, I gotta take a picture of that. Well, yeah, well, really. Let me yeah. guys give you a couple uh, of things to take, take, take back. You know, I mean. That's good. I'll tweet that out. Just real quick, give you the story because I want you to follow up on this. It's gonna be good. So this is called the Marine and the Baby. And if you watch the video, Grizz talks to you down in Nicaragua doing a uh, search and destroy. No doubt to lose these guys, you know, all the recipients. They're doing search and destroy. They got cover, drugs, and government. They hear gunfire. They start heading down the mountain with the gunfire to come along and trying to get there to get there done. Find a small village, about 90 people, and everybody is dead. Okay. So we're walking through burning. Apparently, you know, the thing that the bad guys are still around. And Chris starts hearing a And there's a woman dead, pointing. So he follows along, sounds like a battle. Finds his baby in a bush covered in insects. He washes it off the canteen and you know they're trying to feed it and what they meant for it, right? Calling their input is like a this town of a general design. So get that baby out of there. So they bundle up the baby and scratch it in front of them every day in the jungle, right? Look off the front and the helicopter goes down. As the basket's coming down, he moves the baby into the basket and gets kids kicked in the rain. And I asked Chris at that moment, I said, hey, Chris, how did you feel at that moment? It breaks out of the sun. It is one of the most powerful videos I've ever done. By chance, I'm out here with today. Right here like this. I'm under the tent of the airplane. A couple comes up and he's right behind me. I can tell the guy's got some broad tusks. So, she wouldn't serve us now. She didn't sit in the house. I know the guy that you did. And I started, he told me about a baby in Chesapeake with a rock on it. And the guy's face just changed. He goes, right, right, right. This is guy's I said, where's the And he goes, I mean, you could just started walking around because he didn't believe us. He says, you know how many people know that story? He says, apparently not many. He said, no. He says, you're talking about big kids. And he starts talking. He was, at, he was there. Uh -huh. So now I'm, I, I, I try to get as much information as I can find. But I want to follow up, find out that baby. I thought it'd be a great story. But being that, you know, part of the band of brothers, and that, you know, it was hard for me to find any more information. So I kind of put it on the back corner. This guy says, I know who they are. And Driz off the streets. He married. This guy got him and nothing there. Yeah. Well, Driz saw, saw his band of brothers out. And I'm thinking, hopefully, maybe I had some new things. Because I was yeah. trying to help Driz out of the line, too. Yeah. And so this, hopefully, this follows through, and it becomes, you know, I want to go through the whole thing, find, you know, get the story from the other guys, you know. Oh, yeah, do a documentary on this, because it is just a wonderful time. 
So I am just so stoked to meet you guys. I mean, obviously, you're a. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. everybody's here. <laughs> Come on, here I am. You know, we're with you. So, yeah, I got to swim shark you what I got in the other. You can do it this time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's get a picture. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 That's my face. I, I have had effect on cameras. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Thank you. Here, I'm going to show you what I do back here. I have a TV screen back here, so I go ahead and show oh, wow. all of Alex's. And, you know, for these guys, I show wow. the building number seven coming down. Yeah. I turned on a couple of uh, uh, engineers yesterday to do the building coming down. Yeah. You know, so they can do that. Yeah, great. This is. Uh, Yes, I, think that, I saw that this morning. Yeah, I saw that this morning. How they we were back in the motel room and we were watching it, and all of a sudden it just goes blank. And there was about two seconds of black air on Fox News. And they come back to the anchor who's there, and she she's like, uh, uh, you know, so I mean, you, you can hear it when you see the subtitles, you can hear it. I didn't hear them say that when I was watching it. But with the subtitles, you can hear him saying it. And I said to my wife, I said, just cut that off, that. And he noticed that it told hey guys, we're cutting in 30 seconds or whatever. They did. Boom. <laughs> we got it off. What so. if I, one of the things I uh, do now is, uh, Chris, you know, Mark Dice kind of like focuses on the idiocy, which he needs to do. Yeah. When you get that around. But my work attracts. Yeah. So I have people always ask me, what kind of, you know, reaction do you get? Mostly, of course, it's apathy. You know, I'm not out here in the book of two beans, giving away two beans of rice. They have all the Yeah. But people have been running to stop by and talking to me with what's going on. I mean, you know, they make you get a really good conversation. Yeah. I just had a conversation with this guy. See, I'm not getting. I got like, like, like you really good to have an interview with you, you know. But here you are in my office. <laughs> and like I just had a great 20, 25 minute interview with this man. A professor from Texas A&M, mm -hmm. Department of Agriculture Economics. Uh -huh. So I got into him with the effect of GMOs. I was able to turn him on the Agenda 21, which he knew nothing about. Really? Yes, that's great. So that's why I love being out here. I never know who I'm going to talk to. Famous newscasters, <laughs> the professors, you know, veterans, bums, you name it. It's you know, I, I learn stuff all the time too. I was talking to Jim Gearock with Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. He, he turned me on to the idea of understanding that the war on drugs is a UN agenda. Oh, yeah. about you on Agenda 21. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware that they had come up with all the schedules, had all the drugs, put into the schedules 10 years before Nixon said, war on drugs. I want you to look at come up with that idea. You know, if we could get the conservatives to understand it, it's a UN agenda. Right. That is that is the, if we could get them to understand it's the magic word. Well, if we could get them to care about private property, right? <laughs> <laughs> There are a lot of things like, yeah. you know, why are you <laughs> poisoning us with fluoride and yeah. that kind of No, but I mean, you know, they're all about private property, right? Yeah. And so many of them hate the UN. And it's like, well, you realize yeah. that this thing that you support so much that hasn't worked for 45 years is a UN agenda that is coming after private property, destroyed the whole legal process, you know, it's a whole asset circular market. thing. I do this yeah. a lot too with the global warming people. I say, do you know who's financing most of the global warming? It's the big oil because they're making money off of both ends. By you doing what you're doing, you're actually working for the big oil companies. And the kicker is they're making more money off of the carbon credits now than they do their product. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it's all right. yeah. So it all goes yeah. circular. And again, having the screen back here, I make these bets for a lot of them. You know, if somebody wants to have any contention with me, this is my standing thing. I'm like, oh, look. Obviously, you're a lot smaller than I am. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. so, let's do this. Let's have a discussion on this. And if I say something you think is off the rails, 
I, I, I don't know, I, I feel confident, I'll say, I'll give you 10 to 1 odds. For every dollar I put up, you put up 10, and it turns out that what I said is right, you'll give me your money, what do you say? I still got my money, David. No one ever takes me <laughs> up on this. They want me like I got a bowler. And that's what I do, I call it the, uh, uh, bullshit walking segments. Because <laughs> when they start walking away, I said, look, I'm right here. I said, come on, I'll, come on, don't be bullshit walking. And I'll, yeah. you know, I said, walking. So I got quick a quick clip of that. A light catching, like what I was doing here. Yeah, this, of course, is a trap question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is what you want. Yeah. This is beautiful. Well, I want to show these on the yeah. like, ones. I've got several people come by saying, I hope she does. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes! So I'm, I'm immediately... You know everything else, right? Why not? <laughs> so I'm immediately... The silverware, <laughs> the elections, the, you know, the uranium. It's just hit along the list of... Uh, <laughs> I'm use that line, yeah. too. So I'm immediately... I'm taking... Excuse me, I, I can't hear... I'm an old man. I didn't quite hear you correctly. I mean, the ambulance goes, did you say you're okay with her stealing the election from the majority of she, you know, the majority of destroying democracy. You're okay with her destroying democracy. Is that what I heard from you? And you know, then they, they kind of like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, then you're okay. Yeah, I oh, know, they're fine. You're turning the presidency to the state. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're absolutely. That's, that's why, they're why so I catch afraid. The video. Yeah, that's why they're so afraid of the other people. They're probably right. <laughs> but, uh, but they're afraid of that, okay? And because they support it in their people. And uh, that's a sad state of affairs. It's great talking to you. Oh, Gee, you're you're kidding me. I, I'm glad but I made it out of the rain today. I was wondering yeah, how you're here. I was going, what the hell am I doing out here today, you know? That's great. But I had you and the professor, which was stellar, yesterday I talked about you. Gosh, I'm doing it. Okay. We need to do it tomorrow. <laughs> well, David, thank you. Say hi to the crew back there. Let them know I'm out here promoting you guys. Great job. That's super. I love this. Retail. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Mike. Oh, God bless.